equally those of the host and guest and are not necessarily supported by WPSC 88.7 FM, station management, or the station owner, William Patterson University. Anyone wanting to offer differing opinions may do so by calling the show at 973-720-2738. Abusive callers will be rejected. Now here's your program on WP 88.7 FM Brave New Radio. morning good morning good morning to you and if you can hear the sound of my voice that means you are tuned in and you're listening to another edition of the reading circle with your host mark medley we come to you live each saturday morning bringing you the best of what's going on in the literary world and we have none other than that planned again for this morning So you know the drill. I'm going to tell you this frequently throughout the show. Get on all your social media sites, whether it's Pinterest, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, about.me, whatever social media site you may have as an account. Text somebody as well. Use your telephone or your smartphone. Let somebody know that they need to tune in to GoBrave.org right now because I have a guest. She is in the house. I will introduce her momentarily. But as you know, if you've been listening to the show any amount of time, you know I have a ritual and routine. And I start off reading from two books as well as providing the weather for you. And then I'll introduce my guest and our interview will be underway. So I'm going to go ahead and get the weather out of the way right now and I can tell you I tell you last week I said baby it's cold outside well baby it's still cold outside as in the Wayne New Jersey area it is 12.8 degrees we are working our way up to a high of 28 and we can expect sunshine and a few afternoon clouds and we're going to move back to a low of 21 then tomorrow Sunday it's going to be a little bit warmer but we're going to have rain we're moving to a high of 43 Dropping back to a low of 31, expect heavy rains at times early and then cloudy and rain with some possible snow in the evening tomorrow night, 80% chance of precipitation. And then on Monday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high of 37, a low of 22. And as we roll on into the forecast for the next couple of days on Tuesday, generally sunny, despite a few afternoon clouds, 37 as a high, 28 as a low, similar temperatures to Monday. And then on Wednesday, rounding out the forecast, variable clouds with snow showers, high near 35, low of 20 Wednesday night. 60% chance of precipitation. Well, that is the weather brought to you right here from the WP 88.7 FM Weather Center. Well, I'm going to read from our two books. You know, we have two books that we kick the show off from. What Can Happen When We Pray as well as Until Today. Both of those are daily devotionals. Kicks the show off in a very positive vein and the rest of the morning just flows. So I'm going to read from those two passages and then introduce my guest who's waiting in the wings. Share some information with you and then come back and we'll have at it as they can say. For January the 17th, believe it or not, January is halfway gone. 2015 just came in and half of January has already sailed by. January 17th, safe haven. Today's prayer, dear Lord God of peace, grant that today may be a day of peace within my heart. Grant me the courage to trust you for all I need. Let your shalom that surpasses all understanding rest and abide over your people. This day and forever. Amen. One night while serving a hospital or serving as a hospital chaplain, I received a request from a nurse to come visit a patient. The patient's request was for someone to sit and help him make it through the night. He was despondent over his condition and had talked about committing suicide. 
We talked, reflected on God's word, and prayed for the shalom of God. Eventually, he was led by God's spirit to lay down in the peace of sleep. When he awoke, he called for me to come to his room again. He shared his dream. Something indeed had changed. There was the sound of hope in his voice. His attitude had changed. Where there was sadness, now joy and peace seemed to abide. His circumstances were the same, but he was different. He had met the Savior and was now trusting in the Lord to grant him God's shalom. That is peace, and if there's anything we need in the entire world, the entire planet, the entire universe, it is peace. From Until Today by Yann Levan Zant for January 17th, she says, Life will work for me when I realize... I cannot break through until I have a break down. Each of us face or each of us must face a moment in our lives called the breakdown moment. This is the time when you must stand toe to toe, eyeball to eyeball with the very thing you have tried desperately to avoid. In that moment, you will want to find a way around over, under or out of having to do what you are faced with doing. You will do anything, say anything to avoid having to go through what is facing you. You will want to run and hide. You will get weak, almost faint. You will believe you are going to be sick. You won't be. What you will be is on your way to greatness. In the breakdown moment, the very thing you have feared, resisted, denied will stand before you shaking its finger in your face and sticking its tongue out at you. It will show you things about yourself that you refuse to see or acknowledge. It will tease you, taunt you, push you, pull you to the verge of breaking down. In fact, that is its purpose. In the breakdown moment, your defenses break down. Your fantasies shatter. Your excuses fail. Your resistance erodes. In that moment when there is nothing standing between you and the thing you fear the most... You will be forced to step into your greatness because that is what life is demanding of you. Until today, you may not have realized that you are totally able, perfectly prepared, fully capable of doing the very thing you have convinced yourself you could not do. Just for today, be devoted to doing just one thing that will help to convince you. Today, I am devoted to stepping into my greatness. And speaking of greatness, that's a wonderful segue into my introduction of my guest for this morning. She is on the line and awaiting for us to kick off. And we came to be introduced to each other again through one of the social media sites. I realized or had seen or viewed my guest's profile on one of the sites called about.me and I found her to be an extremely interesting person and as I read her profile and saw that she was an author I said oh well, definitely I have to have her on the show and one of the first things that caught my eye about her was the fact that she was a pilot and you know I am an aviation geek so the fact that I saw she was a female and a pilot and an author and everything else I said I have got to talk to her and tapped in and we've started going back and forth on Twitter and email and scheduled the date for the date and here it is but she is none other than May K Beeler she's a spirited good good morning morning. good morning everyone thank you so much for having me thank you so much for joining me I'm gonna read a little bit of your bio here from your website to get to let the fans know exactly what I was just talking about okay she is spirited vivacious you can hear that already American aviatrix, world record-breaking pilot, award-winning television personality, true crime author, veteran TV host, producer, journalist, spokesperson, and active FAA certified flight instructor with a passion for all things flying. Born in our nation's capital, May Kay grew up in the Washington metro area and after a brief stint as a cowgirl working summer jobs in Wyoming, attending Montana State University and graduating from the University of Kentucky 
May Kay found her niche on the small screen and in the big sky. Her television broadcasting career began as a co-host for the nationally syndicated TV show PM Magazine at WATE TV, the ABC affiliate in Knoxville, Tennessee. Her flying career took flight from those same roots. With an extensive career in television, May Kay has worked for every major network affiliate as an on-camera talent in TV news and entertainment. I can see that. I'm looking at your picture. I can see that. Readers of a local newspaper voted May Kay their favorite TV radio personality in a Charlotte area. Best of poll. Additionally, May Kay has worked as a TV news weather anchor for the ABC and NBC TV stations in Winston-Salem, North Care. Lina. I'm trying to see where I want to jump to here, but it's all so good. I think I want to share all of it. Oh, May- my goodness. I think I've been around the block a few times. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want the people to sleep. <laughs> oh May Kay's knowledge of weather comes firsthand from her flying career. She's a licensed airline transport pilot, FAA certified flight instructor. She set world aviation records in the experimental Quest Air Venture Aircraft. May Kay has been named FAA Aviation Safety Counselor of the Year for the Southern United States. She is a member and a former chapter chairman of the Kitty Hawk 99s, the International Organization of Women Pilots. May Kay represents Greensboro, North Carolina's Piedmont Triad International Airport as the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. We know it fondly as AOPA, Airport Support Network Volunteer. Additionally, she has served as an AOPA seminar instructor, pilot traveling the nation for the Air Safety Foundation. May Kay is a former charter pilot, an applicant in NASA's Journalist in Space Project. An avid proponent of learning to fly, May Kay is the creator of the Diva Flight Experience, all right now, which empowers women through aviation. May Kay has been published in dozens of magazines. She has covered the Great Cross Canada Centennial of Flight International Air Rally as pilot journalist. Other adventures entailed her personally piloting two crash survivors back to the Bahamian island that decades ago nearly claimed their lives. Her account of this compelling story, featuring the playground of a legendary drug lord, appeared in AOPA Pilot Magazine, the world's most widely read flying publication. This is true. Her DVD documentary by the same name, Return to Norman's K, is available on Amazon, and Norman's K was portrayed in the movie Blow starring Johnny Depp. May Kay has co-authored a book about the island's former meddling cartel drug smuggling operation released in 2014, and we're going to be talking about that this morning, is Buccaneer, the provocative odyssey of Jack Reed, adventurer, drug smuggler, and pilot extraordinaire. The book is an award-winning true crime tale that details the life and times of a pilot smuggler turned infamous prison inmate. Reed's story has never been given to any other journalists. May Kay's TV interviews include Mel Gibson and Oprah. As a longtime TV spokesperson, May Kay has appeared in hundreds of commercials spanning local to national coverage. She has traveled the world for her television work. May Kay, again, good morning to you. Wow, good morning. I'm exhausted after you read that. <laughs> and that wasn't the whole thing. I kind of started picking and choose and started skipping. Oh, uh, my and, and gosh. Picking. Well, you know, how, how wonderful life is. It what an is. Amazing, amazing adventure life is. And looking back over it with your reading all these things, I think, what a journey it's been. And I'm just delighted to be able to share some of it with you and the listeners today. Well, you know the great thing about it, and this is why, you know, we get one shot at it here on this place we call Earth, so it's kind of like, why not live it? And yeah. there are so many people who don't, and it's sad, because see, recently, I've never heard many, I, wanna, I can't even say just recently, most of my guests, or many of my guests, I consider them quote-unquote renaissance people. In other words, they really do live life to the fullest. I mean, they do more than one thing. I mean, they're not pinned down into any one area. Like in you, in your particular case, you've done TV, you've done radio, you've done writing, you've done piloting, you've done. I mean, to me that, and, and I'm the same kind of person, and maybe that's I why I are. that's why yeah. I connect with people of that ilk, if for lack of a better word. And I just believe, you know, let us whatever it is that you really want to do, go ahead and get it done because you're gonna look back one day and and then that woulda coulda shoulda thing is just not gonna work. Oh, no, and and there's a shelf life, right? I mean, when you're young, you don't realize really how short life is. Right. And you think you have all the time in the world. You know, that's the illusion of youth. 
And then as we go through our lives, we realize how precious it is. And, uh, yeah, we don't want to have regrets. We, we can't be afraid of failure. We have to go out there and do what our heart speaks to us and do it and don't be afraid to fail. And you're going to fail. Right. right. That's part of life. That's and, absolutely uh, correct. But the more times you fail, then you're, you're going to have more shots at success. It, uh, it all balances out. It really does. And actually, it, it, the trick about failure is to learn from it. It's like, what yeah. did, I, what did yeah. I learn from that? And how can I use it, as you just said, in my successes? Yeah. And, and I know over my lifetime, I've done like what people have thought has just been some really crazy moves. But they've always been <laughs> moves that, one, I've deep down inside of me wanted to do. And I've shared this on the show before. I, remember I, had, I had just gotten married not too long before that. And I had gotten hired by the largest telecommunications company in the world at that time. And within maybe a year, two year period of time within that, I put that on hold and left to go join the Air Force. <laughs> wow. I went and uh, joined the Air National Guard, but I had to leave and go do the training with active duty Air Force. I had to go to school and everything. And people were like, sure, sure. They were like, wait, 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 help me understand this. You just got a job at a dream company. You just got married not too long ago. And you're going to put that on hold so you can go in the Air Force? Yes. And, and they oh said, why? Goodness. I said, because I love airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, when and, you, I, and you seized the opportunity. Yes. And, and yeah. whenever I had taken the test for the Air Force, my ASVAB scores was so high, the recruiter was giving me like all these different job choices. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. And she got to the last one and she says, I know you wouldn't want this one. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, jet engine mechanic. And I said, jet engine mechanic. I said, will it put me around the aircraft? And she said, yes. I said, that's the one I want. So (laughs) so I wound up doing that. And then then at Midstream, I I just said I was in the largest telecommunications company in the world. I did that for 15 years. My first love was always education. Left that and now became a school teacher. I left that, went into education. But again, that's what was in my heart. So I can appreciate people that do more than one thing and can impact more than one industry, and they're following their heart. Exactly, and you're passionate, because I can hear the passion in your voice, and I'm passionate, and that's where we're able to help others, I think, is with passion. And, and the fact that you're in education and a principal and touching the lives of so many young people, and, of course, your listeners, too, um, good for you. Good yeah, for you. and, and it, it really is passion, and it really is fun. And I, I kind of, if you've read my About Me page, I think it starts off something like along the lines of, if I don't have fun doing it, I quit, I stop. <laughs> and when right. the fun runs, something like that, it says, if I, you know, if I don't have fun doing it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's really what it's about. But like I said, when I went on about.me, that's where I saw you and your profile caught my attention. And when I saw all the different things you were doing, oh. I said, I wanted to have you on here. And then when Buccaneer was released, I said, I definitely have to have her on so we can oh, talk about that. thank you so much. So. Thank you so much. I'm going to share some information with the listening audience, listening audience you know the deal this is i don't call them breaks anymore may Kay, because you know you always hear folks like well you're in the business you know you always say we'll be right back and and, yeah, and it yeah. kind of dawned on me well, i'm not going anywhere and i don't want the listening audience to go anywhere either right, <laughs> so exactly. i always tell them look i'm going to share this information with you listen to that but as you're listening get on your social media sites and let somebody know that may Kay beeler is on the air with me tell folks around the world they can tune in on gobrave.org if they're in the northern new jersey area they can listen on the radio at wp88 8.7 FM, but for everybody else on the globe, as long as they have internet connectivity, they can tune in on G-O-B-R-A-V-E dot org, gobrave dot org, and that's a part of our slogan where we say we are brave new radio. And my guests definitely are brave guests, and May Kay is one of them. So let someone know that May Kay is on the air with me. I'm going to do the same while I'm listening. I'm going to get on Hootsuite, and that shoots everything out to all of my social media sites to let them know she is on, and we're getting ready to start our interview. I started going cold turkey. Well, at least when I'm in the car. I know I shouldn't do it, but it's so hard to stop. That's why I hide it from myself, so I won't be tempted. I used to do it all the time. I stopped by locking it in my glove compartment. My friend used to do it way too much. Now I turn it off when we're in the car. My solution is simple. I just don't do it. There are lots of ways to stop yourself and others from texting and driving. How will you stop? Tell us at StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. 
So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. A message from USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. You're listening to The Reading Circle with Mark Medley on Brave New Radio. That's right. You're listening to The Reading Circle with your host, Mark Medley. And my Renaissance Woman guest this morning is May K. Beeler. Now, good morning, good morning. May K., my first question is, because your name, for me at least, play tricks on my eyes. You know how <laughs> yeah. you, you know how your your mind associates or assumes that it's seeing things that's not there. And when I first read it, I thought it said Mary Kay. I know. So I started Mary, like okay, with Mary Kay Cosmetics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I started at Mary Kay Beeler, and then I looked real hard. I said, Wait, a minute, that says May Kay. Now, is <laughs> is May Kay short for something, or is that your real name? It, it, it is. It's a nickname for Mary Catherine. Ah. And when I, when I was very little, my dad nicknamed me May Kay because I've never really looked like a Mary Catherine. Okay. I've always had too much spunk for that. Mary Catherine's a beautiful name. I was named after my two grandmothers. Okay. But, uh, no, it, it's not me, so dad named me May Kay. Okay, so for those of you in the listening audience, it's M-A-Y-C-A-Y. Yeah, that, that's how word. we spell it. It's M-A-R. That's right. One word. M-A-Y-C-A-Y. <laughs> like I said, my yeah. eyes was playing tricks on me. And I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't say Mary Kay. This is May Kay. <laughs> so it's real easy to remember. I mean, May Kay Beeler. And the book is Buccaneer. So May Kay, let's roll the tape back and where this all began. I mean, where did this like spunky person come from? Were you always that way as a child? Was writing your thing then? Or was communications your thing then? Or, or how did that get started? Well, I think, yeah, I think that we're kind of born that way. Um, I've, I've always been a performer, and I've been writing since I was young. Now, I will say I never aspired to be an author, never in a million years did I think I would write a book. Uh, of course, I've written thousands of things for television. I'm a broadcast journalist uh, for magazines, but mostly TV. But, no, I never thought I would write a book. But I've always been creative, and at a young age, I've had English teachers tell me that, oh, my gosh, you know, you've got something there. And I will tell you, my mother was a writer. She was a public servant for the, for the government, and she had quite a skill. So I think that we inherit some gifts, and I think we come into the world, we were right. born with some gifts. And I've just always been creative. Um, I was an artist when I was young, and then that art, talent, or work, or passion, whatever you want to say, segued into my writing and then into my performing on television, and now into my role as a flight instructor, a sharing the passion of flight, with others so it's it's multifaceted now you're like my third journalist or person with a, a journalistic background within the last month in terms of guests as a matter of fact my guest last week nikki woods was one as well and then about a month ago i had another young lady who also had worked in television or still works in television how did that come about because for, for the average lay person just the thought of working in television and radio automatically conjures up Wow, that's a glamorous job. Oh. And then, and you are not only like behind the scenes, you're actually on air and in front of camera. How did that right. come about? Right. Actually, it started a long time ago. I won't tell you how long ago because you'll think I'm half dead. I'm so old. But <laughs> actually, well, that's two of us. <laughs> I was, I was a, a commercial spokeswoman for Lexington Dodge. I wore a, a hat, a cowboy hat and cowboy outfit, um, pitching cars in a car commercial, it's kind of a cute young gal in a cowboy hat, and I've done thousands of television commercials since then, but it started as that, and then there was a show at the time called Pia Magazine, it was a nationally syndicated show, Mary Hart came from that, right. Matt Lauer, um, Lisa Gibbons, That's right. Um, a lot of folks that you're familiar with today came from that show, and I was one of the local hosts, I started in Knoxville, Tennessee, I, you know, you think, well, how did that happen? I auditioned for it. And I do think that some, some things are destined in life, that doors sometimes open for us. That doesn't mean the rest of my life has been easy. I've had to work very hard, and you have to go after what you want. Correct. Um, but I started as a, you know, a television spokesperson and TV commercial, a lot of car commercials. I've pitched lots of products from Terminex and termites to a basement waterproofing to glamorous products, diamonds, you name it, I have done it um, on a local level and even on a regional level, even Coca-Cola at one point. Nothing real big. You know, it's kind of like a big fish in a small pond, but I'm grateful for the work that I've done. But that's how it started, and you know, fr from that I was a television host. I learned to fly for that. 
um, met lots of wonderful people. I became a meteorologist, did television weather. I've, you know, I've pretty much d- done it all, and it's been a wonderful experience, and all that kind of led me to where we are today. Well, it's interesting because, again, at first off, I'm always interested, and in, because me being on this show was totally, and, and I agree with you in terms of some things are just meant to be, yeah, but I call yeah. it a fluke. But I know it wasn't a fluke because I know, right. you know, things are... Because there's no such thing. There's right. no such... Right. But, like, yeah. the story of... Because people are asking how... And this is this is a volunteer show. This is something I just do for the passion, for the love of it. But still, the way that I got into it was, like, totally off in terms of... wasn't planned, even though it, you know, I'm one of those that believe in the vision boards and the journaling and all that. Even though right, I, I right, had right. in my journal, I wanted to one day have a radio show or a TV show uh-huh. that was written down. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like... <laughs> you know, when you do these things like, yeah, I do believe it's going to happen, but you just have no idea. So well, exactly. I, exactly. I, I'm up here at the same studio that I'm sitting in now. And I was at campaign manager for a friend of mine who was running for school board. And he had he was doing the interview and I was out in the lobby waiting and they had a sign pinned up on the cork board that said, do you want a radio show? Now, this is back into the power of words and, and Ooh, going yeah. into the universe and this and that. I'm out there, didn't know anyone was also around the area. And I'm out there just fooling around, saying, yeah, I want a radio show. You, the sign says, do you want a radio show? Yeah, I want a radio show. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm doing this. Did not make hey give it another thought until like a week or two later, I'm at my daughter's school and a gentleman came up to me and said, why didn't you call me? And I said, what do you mean, why didn't I call you? I didn't even know him. And he says, oh. well, you said you wanted a radio show. I'll put one together for you. <laughs> Oh he happened to be the station manager, and he said, I've been looking for someone to do a show on books. You were a teacher. I thought you'd be perfect. <laughs> wow. And that's the, the cliff note version of how I got started. And that was 14 years ago. Wow. And so I, that, and the only reason I share that and I'm you bringing it into the conversation is because people always wonder, because everybody sees TV, movies, film, radio, they see that as like glamour jobs. And, and people I know are always wondering, how do you get that job? Exactly. How do you become exactly. a spokesperson? How do you get on commercials? How do you get on TV shows? So that's why anytime I get somebody that's in that business, I always throw that question out of it because I know there are inquiring minds and the listening audience who want to know, how do you do that? I know, and, and you're right. You know, some of it is either the vision board, like you talked about. It's what do you want? Hold it in your mind. Believe it, uh, and then put it out to the universe. And then, of course, where there's work that needs to be done, you must do your work. Right? Correct. We can't sit around. It's not going to fall. Sometimes things fall in your lap, but most of the time you have to go for it. Correct. So, so what you experience and what I have experienced can happen to anybody um, as far as manifesting. And I mean, everything started out as a thought, right, and a desire. Correct. The chair you're sitting on, the, the radio show, everything starts out that way. So it, it's a matter of having the courage to go for what you want. Put it out in the universe, and, and don't worry about it. It, it In some form, it's going to come to you. Sometimes it's not immediate, right? Sometimes Correct. Sometimes it takes time. Um, but it's going to come. If you want something bad enough, and I mean you got to really want it, right? Correct. If you want it bad enough, it's got to give in to you at some point. <laughs> it's going to give it up to you at some point. Okay, if you want it that bad, we're going we're gonna to make it happen. If you want something bad enough, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. And you know what? I tell my guests all the time, and what I've, I've started doing this over the last maybe month or so or the last couple of months, my guests always say something that I want to quote them on Twitter as. And you just said something, and I have to say, you said, if you want something bad enough, eventually it's going to give in to you. Yeah. Is that how you said it? Because that's, that's yeah, what I, I want to Yeah, it, it has to give in to you. It has to give it up to you. It has it to It can't resist you anymore. You want it, you want it, you want it. Okay, here it is. Right, and, and I, you know, that's from you. somewhere else. There's so many quotes that I've loved from other people that I've taken. <laughs> really, because I, you know, I wasn't born saying that to my mother. But, um, but <laughs> it's something like that. If you want it bad enough, you keep after it, you keep after it, you keep after it, it's going to give it up to you. It's like, okay, here it is. Yeah, so I'm going to quote you on that. I'm going to put your name behind it, Make A. Biller. Make it and, sound and, good, and, though. And I'm, I'm going to put it on there <laughs> as quoted, because each week now I'm finding at least one thing to put on, on Twitter from the guest. And you said one right off the bat, early in okay. the show, because most time it comes later in the show, and you hit one early in the show. I like oh, that, where you oh, said you... Because yeah. really, yeah. for the listening audience... And I, and I love this conversation because I hope the show is also an inspiration to you that as you're Absolutely. listening to the guests share their experiences as to, as to how they got to where they are, that it will encourage and inspire you to say, you know what, I, I can do this. 
Absolutely. And, and, and May Kay is absolutely right. And the thing about it is you don't know when. It's just a matter of having that desire mm-hmm. there. And you don't know when. Yeah. Like I said, for me, I had no clue in 2001 yeah. <laughs> that yeah. a radio show was going to kick off from just me out in the lobby saying I want a radio show. But Isn't that crazy? It That's really crazy. is. But it, yeah. it can happen for folks and not only in one area. Because as, you, as we're talking and you heard me introducing May Kay, May Kay is not only you know, a pretty face. She's not only the talent on, on TV or on radio. She's also a pilot. She's also a writer. So that's where now, as as because you you said a couple of minutes ago that as you were doing the TV, it caused you to now become a pilot. What was the connection there? Oh or my was God. that a part now, of weather? Th- this was just crazy. Um, many years ago, General Aviation Manufacturers Association they make the small General Aviation airplanes. For folks that don't know what that means, we're not talking about the big airliners. We're not talking about crop dusters or military. We're talking about small personal business jets, personal planes, uh, where people have the freedom to fly wherever they want, when they want, in their own personal planes. So Gamma, General Aviation Manufacturers Association, who make these planes, contacted selected TV personalities around the nation. I was one of them. They said, look, if you will learn to fly through first solo and put it on television, you know, do coverage on it. At the time, I was on every weeknight at 7.30 with my co-host um, for this television show. If you will do that, we'll pay for it through First Solo. So I was one of those folks, and I thought, what? You want me to get in the plane and learn to fly and then <laughs> record it, document it on television? So I did it, and, you know, what a gift that was. Was it scary? Yes. Initially, my first two lessons, I thought, oh, my God, I could get killed doing this. Right. This isn't natural. I thought, this does not come naturally to me. But within two lessons, I was hooked. I loved it. Um, I have been addicted to the freedom, the challenge of it, the empowerment of it for 30 years now. So you have to be open when life gives you certain opportunities. Um, you need to have the courage to try it. Now, I'm not suggesting you do something that is unsafe for you or isn't right for you. Uh, just because someone asked you to do it, right? But you need to be bold enough to consider, let me try this to stretch my wings um, and, and to further myself. And, and that's what happened. I learned to fly for a TV assignment. I never dreamed that one day I'd be a professional pilot. I'm still doing television, um, just, just freelance and part-time now. So I fly and do TV on the side, but really... Flying is is my main love at this point. I can understand that because I am, like I said, I am. I have been an aviation geek as a kid. As a matter of going back to the Air Force story, when I was in high school, I had talked to the recruiter, and I told him I wanted to come in as a pilot. And he asked me about eyesight and vision and all mm-hmm. that. And when they looked at the numbers, he said, "No, you won't be able to fly." I said, "Well, I'm not coming in then." <laughs> and then so, <laughs> and that's why you know between that and my parents said, "Are you crazy? You're going to college." Uh, between yeah. that, at that age, at 18, that's why I didn't enter at that time. But by the time I did go, I did have my college deg- degree. And if I wanted to go in, you know, OCS as an officer, I could have done that. But mm, that, I, yeah. I, I actively chose to uh, be the jet engine mechanic on the enlisted side because it put me around the planes. I mean, I cannot describe for you. And for those who are not like aviation geeks who really don't love flying, and this, and it won't make sense to you. But for those of us who are, it will. But I cannot put in words for you what it was like being out on the flight line with an F-4. Oh, my God. Being, being out, I mean, I would actually be up there strapping pilots into the, the cockpit and, and talking wow. to them before they take off and being out there and, and pulling engines and this. And that. But I cannot describe for people what it was like for me to be out on an active flight line with that much power. Because, see, for me, okay. I don't care if it's a Cessna or if it's a 747. Exactly. To me, planes yeah. are just powerful. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you say, how can they fly? Right. And, and of course, we know how they fly. I teach right. that all the time in aerodynamics. But still, it's the mir- it's the miracle of life. It There's really so many miracles is. every day. <laughs> no, it really is. And I, like yeah. I said, I, I'm like you. I know I know the whole Bernoulli theorem. I exactly. know the whole thing of <laughs> airflow. I know how right. it flows over the wing and under the wing. That's different and pressure. Exa- yes. And yet I still look up in the sky and... And go, wow. <laughs> I know. And you know what? How blessed are we to have the passion? Everyone should have a passion in life. If you don't care about airplanes, that's fine. Right. But everyone should have a passion that reminds them they are alive. It's true. It really yeah. is. And so I laugh because when I do fly, 
um, you know, I know, I, I know about the time of different sounds you should hear. <laughs> and it's just funny to look around for people who are afraid to fly that when you start hearing the bumps and the noises and the this, that, and the other, how their eyes widen. <laughs> like, no, that's normal. That's just the APU firing up. No, that's... <laughs> what was that? And, you know, like anything else in life, it's just because they're not in control. Right. They don't understand what's going on. That's why they're afraid. So isn't that why most of us are afraid of things? Correct. We don't understand it. Or, or we're not in control. So the beautiful right. thing about being a pilot is we know what's going on. We're in control. So a lot of folks that tell me, because, you know, I'm a champion of learning to fly, when they say to me, oh, I'm afraid to fly. There's no way I could do it. I say, it's different if you were up front in the pilot seat. Right. And you were in control, and you have a, a flight instructor like myself guiding you. Right. And then once you learn it and master it, it's a whole different ball game, right, as opposed to being in the back. What's that noise? What's going on? Right. Yeah, and it's really fun because I've had the opportunity to fly a Cessna. They were giving away an a introductory yeah. lesson, and I went, this was yeah. years ago. And yeah. I remember my daughter was little, and my, and my wife at the time, you know, the instructor looked at her and said, well, do you want to get in, too? And she kind of, she looked, thought for a minute, she shook her head yes, so she got in the back. So it was me, the instructor, and her, and my daughter was with her. And so they asked my daughter, do you want to go up too? And she says, I'm not getting in any plane, Dad is flying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. But oh, <laughs> so she stayed on the ground. But it was a wonderful experience. And I fly on the flight somewhere. I have the Microsoft uh, flight, oh, yeah. flight FX yeah. or whatever it is. And You're so probably I, quite good at it. So yeah. I sit there all the time, but getting in the actual plane itself and feeling the dips and everything in your stomach and all that is a totally different thing. Whenever you pull the yoke back and forward and the plane actually goes up or down, it's totally different from sitting there and watching it on the computer screen. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Absolutely. And by the way, you're welcome to come take an introductory flight with me sometime or bring your wife or your youngster and uh, do it. She can have a do, do a diva flight with me. There you go. Um, all right. Well, because yeah, you're in, are you in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. I know the north area. Of Charlotte and, and west of Raleigh. So Piedmont Triad International Airport. I know the area and the airport. All right, if I'm in my area, I'm going to look you up. I'm going to do just that. Look me out, and I'm serious off. about that. Love to have you come to a discovery flight with me. Yeah. Well, I know that would be a thrill because, like I said, aviation-wise, I'm just, like, like I said, I'm always in awe of it, and I'm always... Uh, just like I said, for me, it's just hard to put in the words. And people like, like you get like that about flying. Like, yes, I know, <laughs> it's just... I know, I know. So just you know, for for the listeners who think, okay, well, that's kind of cool, Professor Medley and Mayke, but I'm not into flying. The key is to find your passion. Correct. Because I have found, and and I just love this. And I think I read this from Doctor Phil. I'm not sure, but to be happy in life, three things are required. One, you must have something to do. Two, you must have something to be passionate about. And three, something to look forward to. We all need that in life. We That's all need right. something to do, something to be passionate about, That's and right. something to look forward to. So for you and me, um, it's fine, among right. other things, of course. But everyone right. needs to find, find that to fill in the blanks of that formula. You really do. And for those of you who are listening, use these as words of encouragement, that whatever it is, because... Life is too short, one, to be, you know, um, always worried, depressed, stressed. And that's not to say that you won't have stress. You will. But I, you got, I, I agree with Mayke, one zillion percent. You got to find that one or more things that really turns you on and yeah. go for it and do it. Because believe it or not, all these things that we're talking about for us that would be stressful for many people is relaxing for us. That's right. Because, that's right. We're crazy. We're right. Because, <laughs> Mayke, there are even some people that say, I don't understand how you write. I don't understand. Right, I don't exactly. understand. How could you like writing? How and, could you... And, the write, and the writing thing, Mark, as we know, lots of times it just comes from somewhere right. outside of us. It flows, right? It, That's correct. You're kind of the, uh, the uh, vehicle or the vessel for it. It just, the creativity flows. So whatever it is that you love, let it flow. Just, it just comes naturally, whatever it might be for you. It is. Now, I'm going to take a 50-second information sharing time. You have 50 seconds. As a matter of fact, audience, if, you, if you're one of those that can multitask, that can type and listen at the same time throughout the show, I mean, you can hear the energy coming from May Kay that's, that's even given me even more energy than I normally have. <laughs> that's Cause, scary. Because <laughs> energy connects. It really does. Even over the airwaves. May Kay and I, I see, I'm looking at her picture here on her website, which is, this is a recent picture. Is this an update picture? 
Oh yeah, of course. Oh my! Then, then my goodness! That, see, I know why. That's why I said earlier when I was doing your intro. I see why you on TV here. I, I, well, that <laughs> might be a little Photoshop too. Let's let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest here. The one on my website, I don't know why I was doing the intro. I see why you on TV here. I I but on the gallery, there are a lot of them, and if they go to About Me, that's not photoshopped, or to my Facebook page. Well, I'm looking at the not. black and white one on, on your on your homepage. Yeah. You say no, you could be photoshopped, but, but it's a little, that is a little <laughs> photoshopped. I didn't do it. The photographer, maybe just saying, not sure. Well, look, the the basics, the basis, uh, the, the foundation is there for that for them to be able to photoshop. I mean, there's some people it doesn't matter if you photoshop it or not. It's well, not do it so like, much. Okay. Well, thank you. But very very nice, and yes, I have gone through the gallery and i've seen the about me uh page so by all means what well, we seriously and you can see i'm having a lot of fun with this because <laughs> and make it as you know with radio sometimes every now and again because it hasn't happened to me lately but unlike tv with radio you cannot give one word answers <laughs> oh yeah oh my gosh yeah. that makes like, the host like go crazy and have to oh, really yeah. work and then there are people who are conversationalists like yourself that it makes the job real easy and the time is flying and you could see i'm having a ball with this um so i'm going to sh- do this 50 second share okay. with you and then okay. we're going to come back and talk about buccaneer because we okay. worked our way into because I'm, I'm trying to get you all to connect the dots how make has gone from television and we got that in how she got there and then as a part of the television the life opened up the opportunity for her to take flight lessons on the company and so she got there and now she's also written a book that kind of combines all of it the book kind of combines her tv radio and flying so we're going to talk about buccaneer whenever we resume but while we are sharing this information would you get on every last one of your social media sites and say mark has an energetic vivacious guest on that air this morning that you've got to hear she is an inspiration Get that on all of your sites. Tell them to tune in on GoBrave.org. And if they're in the northern New Jersey area, WP 88.7 FM. They thought they could stop me. They thought they could hold me down. But boy, did they think wrong. Because I'm here. And now that I'm here, I'm going to keep giving y'all the illest mix you've ever heard. From executive producer, Diamonds, comes the illest show on radio. Starring Maltese Award winner Diamonds. Every Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Brave New Radio. Club Melting Pot. Only on WP 88.7 FM. You're listening to The Reading Circle with Mark Medley on Brave New Radio. Yes, indeed, you are. You're listening to The Reading Circle with your host, Mark Medley. My guest this morning is May K. Beeler. May K. has multiple talents, and she has the sense enough and the spirit enough to utilize them. She's been on radio, television. She has a journalistic background, written multiple and many articles, and she has also written a book. And the book is called Buccaneer. Just like you know, if you're a football fan, it's real easy to remember because you can think of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Or if you're a pirate fan, if you're one of those who are into pirates, because we're talking about whatever may be your passion. Again, it should jog your memory. The title of the book is Buccaneer. If you are an aviation fan, the cover on the book is an airplane. (laughs) <laughs> and it's titled Buccaneer. And if you're one that just loves crime and mystery and drama, well, it's about a person's role in the drug cartel and the drug world. So, again, the title of the book is Buccaneer. So, uh, May Kay, come on, let's talk about how did we work our way into now writing this true crime drama? Okay, now let me let me just start out from the beginning. I want to make it very clear to everybody, I do not condone any illegal activity. And my God, especially drug smuggling. Okay, so I am a storyteller. I am a pilot. I was enthralled by the story because not only is it true crime, but it is an amazing adventure story. And it's about the evolution of a young man who went from an all-American boy uh, to a drug smuggler to a Robinson Crusoe-type lifestyle to an infamous prisoner and then to an amazing ending to his life. Okay, so I don't want people to think, ah, you know, my God, she's glorifying a drug smuggler. Absolutely not. 
but it is an amazing adventure story. How it came to be, and you'll have to stop me if I if I say too much. I'm going to try to keep it brief. No, no, no. It's, say as much okay. as you want. Like I said, this radio, you're making my job okay. real easy this morning. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, the, as a flight instructor, I was flying with one of my flight students one day, and he said, May Kay, fly over to such and such. I want to show you this remote-controlled airplane field where they fly these remote control airplanes. And he was into that. And he said, I just want to show it to you. I thought, oh, gee, really? Okay, whatever. No interest at all. Flew over it, and he said to me, I'd like to take your son here one day. My son was 12 at the time. Maybe your son would be interested. Long story short, my son is now a world champion RC airplane pilot and competitor. Wow. Who who knew that was going to happen? Yeah, see, there you go. Who knew this was going to happen? But anyway, in taking my son there, and he loved it, and he spent... Oh, my God, endless hours and days and years honing this craft to be where he is today. I met this gentleman, and he flew RC, remote control airplanes. Uh, you know, for folks at home, these are miniature versions of airplanes, obviously. Okay. And this gentleman told me that he was a commercial pilot, but he doesn't fly anymore. And, and he knew me as a local personality that I flew, and we were talking, and I said, well, why don't you fly anymore? He said, oh, many years ago, my wife and some friends, we would fly to the Bahamas on these things called treasure hunts. It was kind of a touristy thing. Or you'd go all over the beautiful Bahamian Islands, and for folks who haven't been there, it's just heaven, absolute heaven. And he said he had his own airplane, and anyway, he and another couple from North Carolina and his wife were on their way to a place in the Bahamas, and uh, over these little tiny islands or keys, because there's 700 islands in the Bahamas, they developed engine trouble, and they had to divert to this little uh, island that happened to be right under them, and it happened to have a runway, and they ended up crash landing there. And he told me that they thought the runway was blocked on purpose, and they found out that there was um, a drug lord there, and this was the epicenter of the world's largest drug operation at the time, the Medellin cartel, and that the uh, government was involved, the Bahamians and our government, and they were trying to do a sting operation to get this drug lord. Anyway... This couple, these two couples in this airplane that crash-landed there, were caught up in all of this. And apparently, supposedly, the U.S. government contacted them. They flew them. They were able to fly them to Nassau and hospitals and then fly them back to the Carolinas. They said, don't ask questions. It was a big mystery. And he's telling me this story, and I'm thinking, what? And back in those days, I was a young, young girl, and I wasn't interested in current events. I didn't keep up with the drug wars and all that was going on. This is Pablo Escobar stuff. Well, I researched his story a little bit, and I had a wild hair. I said, would you like me to fly you back to that island? It's called Norman's Key in the Bahamas. It's 44 um, nautical miles southeast of Nassau, little tiny island about six miles long, two miles wide. Would you like me to fly you back there, this is now 23 years later, to find your lost airplane? Because their airplane crashed. They love their airplane. People who are pilots, and you probably know that's right. We love our airplanes. They are an extension of ourselves. That's right. So to lose a plane like that, it it broke their heart. They love the plane. Um, I said, do you want me to take, take you back there? And they said, well, sure. They were elderly. At the time, one of the couples didn't have the health to go. The other couple, Dick and Jean Faisu, said, yeah. So with my contacts, you know, folks, if you ask for stuff in life, you'll be surprised what you'll get. That's right. Don't be afraid to ask for stuff, okay? Yes, you're going to have a no at times, but if you don't ask, it's always going to be no. That's right. I, yeah, I asked somebody here at our airport who owned an airplane. I said, can I take your airplane down there? If you'll pay for the fuel and let me borrow the airplane, I'm going to take these folks down there. We're going to look for their plane. I'm going to write a story about it. Hopefully AOPA will, will, um, will publish it, which they did later on. But I had no clue it would be published. Went and did a little documentary about this. I personally flew the couple down there. My son was very young at the time, I think 13. And it brought somebody in who wrote a best-selling book about the cartel and interviewed him, and we looked for the airplane, and we, we, found, their, we found their airplane, the wreckage of the airplane. Um, It's an amazing story. It's called Return to Norman's Key. You can get the documentary on Amazon. It was shot on home video, folks. It's Uh nothing fancy. It's nothing fancy, but the story is amazing. All right, so this led to other research about the cartel. Okay, I I did the documentary. I wrote the article. 
and I tried to get information about Carlos Slater. Carlos Slater was a German-American drug lord, and he was the one that ran the operation on the island. He allegedly was associated with Pablo Escobar. We all know Pablo Escobar was a beast. He was right. a monster, a very violent, hor- you know, very violent man. Um, but he did help a lot of people in Colombia as well, a kind of a Robin Hood type. But anyway, I wanted to get information about Carlos Slater. By the way, for those of you who ever saw the movie Blow, what Johnny Depp portrayed um, George Young, uh, another very famous, probably the most famous drug smuggler, Carlos Slater was George's uh, cellmate, Sally, back in Danbury, Connecticut, years ago. So anyway, Carlos Slater's name isn't familiar to a lot of folks, but George Young's is, and tried to get in touch with Carlos Slater, and in do- who was incarcerated. In doing that, I was led to Jack Reed. All right, folks, so Jack Reed is the subject of this book. Correct. The All-American boy turned drug smuggler, turned Robinson Crusoe, turned inmate. I wrote him a letter. One, I tracked him down, wrote him a letter. One, he, he was on the island with Carlos Slater. He was his best friend. Jack was his main pilot. Now, there were many pilots in the day who smuggled drugs, right? This was easy work. It was adventurous. It was fun. They made a lot of money in a short amount of time. Right. A, a lot of these people either got killed or, or went to jail or quit because they got smart, all right? Jack was one of the initial pilots for this drug operation on Norman's Key, which was allegedly part of the Medellin cartel. He became Carlos Slater's best friend. This is his story of how this happened how this relationship started, and how it changed Jack's life. Now, let me say this, then I'll be quiet, because this is a a long, long story. When I wrote Jack in prison, just saying, this is who I am, I'm a pilot, I went to Norman's Key, I did this story, I just want to talk to you about your role. I didn't hear from him for many months. And it occurred to me, you know, the man never wrote you back. I thought, all right, well, whatever. You know, whatever. Right. Then, then one day, Mark, I get a letter from him from prison. And I go, oh, my gosh. You know, all this time later, he writes me back. And, and the letter's in the book. And he says, dear Miss Beeler, I'm sorry for the delay in writing you back, but I have no interest in sharing information about Norman Ski. He had denied all interviews for 23 years. Okay. Okay, or actually 20 years at that time. I have no interest. Uh, thank you anyway. I'm, I'm, itch- I'm a philosopher now and an artist and that's what I want to put my energies into. I have no interest in talking to you, but good luck with your flying machines. Okay. <laughs> so Yeah, okay. But he was very polite, right. which shocked me, shocked me. And I read it, and I thought, okay, whatever. And I threw the letter down, and I thought, and it, forgive me. For, I thought, okay, screw you. Forgive right. me. I'm being honest. Absolutely. Like, okay. okay, okay, whatever. And I'm telling you folks, within, I don't know, a minute, Two minutes, I don't know how long it was, something, my voice of reason, my gut intuition, whatever you want to say, the little voice in my head said, you have to write him back. You have to write him back. Right. And I thought, what, what am I going to write him back for? Right. What, he, he's not interested, and, and who cares now? Well, I wrote him back, and I said, dear Mr. Reed, I don't know why I'm writing you back. Please know I do respect that you don't want to talk about this. I respect that I get it, but for some reason I feel led to write you back. He wrote me back and said, wow, okay, really? Well, tell me about yourself. What do you want? We ended up exchanging letters, and he shared his flying stories with me. So it was our bond as pilots that initially kicked this off. Okay. I Not was, surprising. Not surprising. Oh, my gosh. And, and he was in his 70s. Now, let, let me say, folks, I, I am not into drug smugglers. I'm not into bad boys. I'm not into people who break the law, but how dare me judge? I don't judge anymore. Right. But that, that didn't entice me. You have to understand that. It was our bond as pilots and him opening up about how, how, he, how he smuggled these drugs, how he got into it, the fear factor, what was involved. Um, so I'll be quiet right there to let you continue because I, I don't I want to talk all day and people are going to fall. No, because I, what I want you to do, and you're doing it, is to whet the appetite of those in the listening audience. Because at the end of the day, uh, the show is put in place to encourage reading. And so my objective is I really don't care what you read as long as you're reading and reading more. And so I try to bring guests to you that have exciting books that once they hear a synopsis, you know what, I want to find out the rest of that story, so I'm going to go out and buy the book. Right. So that's right. that's the intent, that you're, you're whetting their appetite enough that they're now going to, 
take some action, whether it's to go to their local retailer and order it or order it from Amazon or, you know, whenever, because it's not in a downloadable format yet, I don't believe. Not, right now, it's my, not, it's no, not an not ebook yet. sale. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. So, I mean, so, you, yeah. you know, you can order it, your copy of it from Amazon or go to your local retailer and have them order it for you and go back and pick it up or send it to your home. But that's, that's the intent, that they will actually build their library. And yeah. for each guest that come on the line, that's, well, you know, give the, the synopsis of the book, whet the appetite, and then let the reader uh, now go out. Because, see, now you've already wet mine, even though I know you sent me uh, the copy through email. You brought it sent to the e-book. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. but, but you wet mine to actually get a physical copy in my hand now as well. So <laughs> I'm going right. to Oh, yeah, you've got to have the physical copy. Uh, right. And, and, yes, and everyone who's read it, most, most everyone who's read it, reads it in one to three sittings. I'm sure because so, it's it probably like you just want to see what's going to happen next. Right. <laughs> like, it, it, yeah, next? and it's short chapters and it's an easy read. And, and folks need to understand, this actually, as I got to know Jack and he was giving me all these fine stories, then he would start, you know, divulging other personal details. And finally I just said, well, gosh, you know, you've written, you've given me all this information may may I be your biographer? I just asked because I knew the story had to be right. told. And he said, well, you know what? I've written my memoirs. I wrote them in prison. Let me send them to you so we don't have to reinvent the wheel and right. start from, you know, from word one. Why don't you read it and let me know what else you want? I read it, and oh, my God, I will never, I will never forget that when I read it, I knew that it would change my life forever. And I also had this incredible sadness come over me. Right. At which I couldn't understand. I didn't know what it was at the time. Very deep sadness. I didn't know what it was, folks. When you read the book, you'll know what it is. Um, so two strong feelings. It would change my life forever and this deep sadness. Now, the memoirs were, were not comprehensive. They, you know, it, it left me with a hundred more questions. But what about this and what about that? You didn't say what happened there and what happened there. So we started the interview process through the mail. Um, he said, okay, bring it on, Nick. Hey, start the interview. This was, uh, he was, you know, elderly at the time, at the end of his life. Um, so we started that process, and that took a while. Uh, and then I added to the book. I added to his memoirs. I kind of rewrote them, so we co-authored it. I had no idea when I met this man through this letter, that initial letter I wrote when I contacted him in prison. Right. Remember now, for research on the documentary I produced, I had no idea that one day I would co-author his life story and... I would become a character in its twist of fate ending. And I'm telling you folks, you can't make this stuff up. If somebody told me when I was a youngster that my life would take this turn and I would be participate in what you have to read about, because I'm not going to tell you what right. I participated That's in. That's right. I'm not going to tell you because you need to read the book. I never would have believed it. I never, that's why I'm telling you, life is an amazing adventure. Yes, Just it is. when you think you have it figured out, greater things than you can ever imagine are out there, but you must be open to it. Yes. So I was open to it because when I heard the voice of reason, whatever you want to call it, yes. the voice of yes. reason in your head, your gut intuition, when I heard that say, you must contact him, you must write him back, I did it. And I didn't know why. And I said, sir, I don't know why. But when you read the book, you'll know why. And see, if you listen to May Kay, had she not written him back, we probably wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation no. about this book right now. No. Uh, the book would not have been, probably would not even have come together. So if you listen to the entire interview of what we've been talking about, and I think she said it best when life offers you, and I put that one on Twitter as well, by the way. <laughs> they're, oh, on there, they're on there now <laughs> they, as well. They could sound when, good, when, when life <laughs> gives you opportunity or gives you an opportunity, you need to be bold enough to try it. Right. And so Within that, reason, right? Right. Within, we're, we're not talking yeah. about anything illicit. We're not talking about anything illegal. We're, we're not right. talking about yeah. that kind of voice. Right. But exactly. we're talking about yeah. something that leads you to yeah. Yeah. your. Uh, because, again, I, I can go back in my life and, and point to many decisions of how we got where and into different things. And and I played the piano as well, Amike. And I could, I could trace a lot of. How, Everything I've ever done, going back to the ability of playing the piano, building finger speed. Whenever I got that job at the 
uh, the, the largest telecommunication company in the world at that time. Um, wow. Whenever I when I got, when I well, I was coming out of college, I just knew I was hot stuff. I had a, a, a bachelor's in business. <laughs> I just knew I was it. That every recruiter in the world was going to be wanting me. Wow. And so when uh, the recruiter from AT and T was at the school. I just knew because I and again, this is back to the power of words. I had an aunt that worked at the company at the time. I had an uncle that was there. And so when I was in college, people say, what are you going to do when you graduate? And I would just flippantly say I'm working for AT&T. Wow. I had no wow. clue that that was going to happen. I was just saying I'm going to work for AT&T. Yeah. Back to yeah. the power of words again. But when the recruiter came, I just knew I was going to be like CEO. And the, the and where I'm going with the story is the, what he says is <clears throat> we don't have anything in management right now, but I see on your resume you can type. Would you be willing to start in non-management and work your way up? So I actually started mm. the company as a secretary, and mm. it was bec- the reason I was able to type was two things. One, my father told me whenever I was in high school, which was really ahead of his time at the time. This was prior to computers and desktops and so forth. Right, so right. He told me to take a typing course. And I look at him like, Dad, you're crazy. And he's like, no, no, take a typing course. You're going to need to trust me on this. So I'm like 16 years old, took a typing course. It was one of the fastest. It was two guys in the class, me and Joe Cinderella. Mm. We were two boys. We, were the, we typed faster than all the girls in the class. Oh, my goodness. So it all connects to my fingers were quick because of playing the piano, which made me type, which that's what the recruiter saw on the resume, which got me my job in corporate, which and I moved up the ladder uh, and, and so forth and so on. Many things I can attribute to playing the piano. Yeah. So when you start going back into like decision trees, you're absolutely right. Had you not done this, that wouldn't have happened. And because you did that, that happened. So yeah. I, I can relate to everything you said. Had you not written him back... We yeah, would not yeah. be having this discussion. And so, extending on what you just said, nothing in life is ever wasted. Sometimes we no. think, ah, oh, wasted my time. Why did I have to do that? Nothing in life is ever wasted, and everything prepares you for this moment in time. So, as a pilot and as a journalist, all that prepared me to co author Jack's book. All that led me up to that moment in my life. And then, listening to the intuition. Listening to intuition is important. Yes, it is. Your, your gut and into it. And that was intuition that told me you need to, and when folks read the book, and don't go to the end because you'll spoil it. And if you've read it, don't spoil it for somebody else. Correct. You'll understand why I had to do that and why I was the character in his life. Okay, so, and that goes into not judging people. I didn't judge him. And he was controversial and he was provocative. Okay. Um, right. But I didn't judge him. I, I don't know why. I probably would have judged someone else, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I, I, you know, honestly. It, it, but I didn't judge him. Right. I was open. And then I, I go back to my Angelos, one of my favorite quotes of, of my Angelos is, be a rainbow in right. someone's cloud. And, and I was able to be that for him and he for me. Right. So you never know how you, please be open to helping people, folks, and don't judge if you can. I know it's hard. We say don't judge, but... He was a drug smuggler. He was in prison. A lot of people think and he had been in prison for two decades, and he had been slapped with two life sentences, all because he didn't rat or snitch on his best friend. So that's part of the book, too. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right. That while other people sang like canaries and snitched for freedom and or reduced sentences or for immunity, uh, Jack didn't do that. Now, you may think, well, what an idiot. Really? You know, he held his tongue to protect his friend, and he spent, you know, two decades in prison. Well, you'll read about why. It's just, that's what he's about reading. It's fascinating because we get into people's heads and, and learn about their lives and adventures that maybe we would never even consider, but it enriches us by sharing in their experience and learning their life lessons. That's right. So, all right, well, I tell you what, we are down to the last portion of the interview and make it i gotta go fly good because at this point you have the opportunity and we've kind of been doing it and oh i'm jealous you get a chance to go fly which i was yeah, down there with you students, but in, at eight o'clock all right so i tell you what we're going to wrap this up you can promote you can talk about your website you can say anything except the price of buccaneer anything other, okay, other okay. than the dollar amount anywhere you're going to be book signings how they can get it so forth this is your opportunity to do that and the mic is yours Okay, well, Buccaneer, The Provocative Odyssey of Jack Reed, Adventure, Drug Smuggler, and Pilot Extraordinaire. Folks, this is true crime. 
It is available from Barnes & Noble and Walmart. It's available on Amazon. You can go online right now and order it at any time. Also from my publisher, Strategic Media Books. All you need to do is Google Buccaneer, The Provocative Odyssey of Jack Reed. You can also Google me and go to my website. So it's maykbeeler.com, M-A-Y-C-A-Y, B-E-E-L-E-R dot com. I'm really the only May K, so if you just Google May K, <laughs> this is true. M-A-Y-C-A-Y, <laughs> you'll find me through Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, and also Jack. I made a website for Jack, so jackcarltonweed.com. But you can find it on May K. Beeler. You can do Buccaneer. You'll find it. But Jack has his website and a little teaser trailer that a fellow true crime author friend of mine, Christian Cipollini, uh, made for me. So... Um, lots of information out there. We would love you to read the book, only if you like true crime and adventure. Okay, so this is controversial. It's provocative. It is about a drug smuggler. If you love flying, you'll enjoy it. Now, I've been blessed with wonderful reviews for the book. The one bad review I got was from a gentleman who said, well, I expected more flying. That's okay. I respect that. So I do want to make it clear that, yes, there are flying stories in the book, but it's also about his upbringing, his adventure in paradise, you know, Robinson Crusoe, his love affair with a young girl. Right. Um, gr- uh, gross ju- judicial misjustice. So this was the longest-running drug trial in U.S. history. Right. A lot of um, media hype, a lot of uh, misjustice. He was the victim of a tragic um, sentencing mistake. A lot involved in this book. Mm. But if you're an adventure lover and a true crime lover, I guarantee you're going to love the book. Well, it sounds like it has all of the elements. I I know it has all the elements for me. It has the suspense. It has the crime. It has the flying. So that's why I want to read it because it has all the elements that I'm interested in. Good, good. Yes, good. Well, I hope hope you will enjoy it. And uh, the the key, too, is never give up. So there's a message at the end of the book, never, never give up. You don't know when the tide is going to turn. And, And there are miracles in life. That's right. So uh, that's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, May Kay, <clears throat> I wish you safe flying. I wish Thank you a safe you. flight with your students this morning. Uh, as you. I said, I'm jealous because if I was there, I'd want to hop in with you. I know. And, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> but have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for rising early and joining me. And uh, right. I'll be shooting out a copy of the interview to you as well as the rest of the social media of the world that didn't rise early with us. They'll have the opportunity to hear it. But I've had a blast. I've had a me thrill too. talking with and, you this morning. And come fly with me. You know, you're, you're welcome to come fly with me. Okay? Uh, you know what? I might aim because... Greensboro is only about nine hours away from me, and, and I might far. be I might be willing to drive that nine for an adventure like that. Well, I'm serious, and, and bring your bride and your daughter, and uh, and your wait till it warms up a little bit because we'll I do to go up now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a great flight. I wish you nothing Thank but you. success and the best with Buccaneer, and Thank we'll be in touch. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care now.